Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Hamid Reza Hassani. You can call me Hamid or Hamid Reza. I'm a PhD candidate of computer engineering, computer hardware and architecture. I'm also enthusiast of AI and data science. Uh, this is my email address, uh, Hamid, uh, at bolhassani.net. You can also contact me uh, at bolhassani at sign gmail.com. In case of any question, feel free to contact me. Uh, and about myself, uh, I have more than 10 years of experience in telecom industry. And right now I'm in one of the biggest mobile, mobile operators in the Middle East as a core network expert. And also I'm an uh, enthusiast of AI and data science. And uh, so I should say that my job is in telecom right now and my passion is an AI uh, which that I'm very passionate about it. Um, I decided to share some of my knowledge and experience uh, through some short uh, uh, videos here in a course, mobile network overview. And I like to uh, share it hopefully um, at least one video per week in uh, English and also Persian language. And my goal in this uh, course is to produce some short videos on reviewing uh, mobile networks from 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G and maybe in the future 6G with focus on core network which is my expert field of expertise. Um, this is the table of contents which we like cover hopefully during this course during uh, several short videos. Uh, at first I will have a brief self-introduction then I will go through mobile networks history from 1G to right now which is 6G. Uh, 6G is right now in a uh, research uh, phase and it's not a standard yet. Uh, right now I'm talking in the 2021 uh, about uh, June. Uh, then we will go through GSM overview and concepts we will talk about 2G, 3G network elements, protocols, and interfaces. Then we will go through some basic CS scenarios. Uh, I will show you some real world scenarios, real tests uh, through traces. And also we will talk about PSGPR's edge, packet switch, and then we will introduce 4G LTE network, architecture and services. Then. We will talk about eBot Packet Core and then uh, we will have an introduction of 5G and its services maybe in the future and also I will talk a little about 6G uh, maybe in the future I will also if these courses uh, would be useful and popular for, popular for you maybe I will uh, produce some uh, course on 5G core network architecture for you uh, it depends on your feedbacks to me. So this is a brief self-introduction. I started my work when I was very young as an IP network engineer. Then I go to the uh, one of the most prestigious telecom companies in the world, Huawei, as a core network engineer. Then I, uh, then I was a con senior consultant for uh, many big companies and also here in MCI right now I'm working as a Core network ex uh, expert, my uh, experience in CSPS, EPC, IMS, and so on. And right now, I also uh, I I never uh, left my uh, acad I never uh, left academic. Uh, uh, it's better to say that I always um, continue my academic uh, career. Uh, right now, I am PhD candidate. I'm also visiting professor in this university. Also, uh, I'm very honored to be scientific reviewer for Elsevier and some other prestigious journals like Springer Nature and so on. And I also have a startup. Uh, it's uh, right now non-profit, but in the future, I hope that it would be very great. It's Databiox. You can go to that through databiox.com. Uh, the goal is to share uh, in this in this uh, phase, the, its goal is to share freely uh, uh, biomedical data sets, bio biological and medical data sets for all enthusiasts. 
on his I think right now till now it was successful because many universities around the world uh, are uh, are citing us and using our data sets okay let's go through the course uh, I will try to uh, make some short videos for example the length of each maybe would be between 5 to 10 minutes but I hope that it would be useful for you because uh, when the length I think when the length of video become very large maybe the efficiency during the time will will decrease so what is uh, the history of mobile networks uh, people and society shows that they have in, they are interested in communication uh, from a stone age till now you can see many many uh, way of communication here for example with this it's also schematic but and uh, to telephone uh, classic telephones are right now here uh, no no not not right now this one when the switching was done by some people as an operator right now a machine a soft switch will do this but in the in the old in, in some old times one person only some rich people or only some special people at telephone for example uh, person a wanted to call person b some people here as telephone operator will uh, would uh, connect these two line together and some sometimes uh, for example if the operator wrongly connected uh, connect the wires some people uh, it will connect to each other in a wrong way so but right now that uh, soft switch came uh, we don't have such of these uh, mistakes uh, as you know uh, uh, many threats come to opportunity in the time for example right now we are facing pandemic you see that many pandemic COVID-19 you see that many uh, improvement in the technology right now is happening uh, and also many wars uh, all, despite that war is not at all it is, is a, not at all a good thing but uh, many improvement I saw that happened in during the war for example here you see during the World War two the first mobile network generation uh, it's reported to say that they they use from this during the war as a mili in military service so uh, if we went, if we like to uh, summarize what happened uh, to uh, from before to right now, you should say uh, as I told in uh, 1980s we had the first generation of mobile networks. The motivation was uh, for, the motivation was for uh, uh, military uh, applications, and it was used for human to human. It was mm, uh, half duplex you know we have some we have uh, in all my classes I tell that we have three uh, way of communication let me let me write here way of communication the first one is simplex it's a one-way communication for example radio okay the the second one is half duplex which means that in in one sec uh, in one time you are sender or receiver one of them and full duplex which is uh, which mobile communication is a example of that is an example of that is a bi-directional bi -direction, bi -directional communications so um, the mobile uh, phones are well, also very big here after that in 1990s we had 2G uh, it was digital voice and for the first time SMS short message services introduced uh, in that time uh, we also had data packet switch but it was on CS circuit switch uh, I will tell I will uh, tell more about that in the future in core networks when I wanted to uh, divide uh, categorize core network to CS PS will uh, discuss uh, in details about that but uh, data speed was very low uh, almost nothing it was 9.6 kilobit per second uh, also through CS service 
during the time people uh, sh uh, people showed that it is um, interesting for them to communicate and in 2000 we had mobile broadband many many applications born here uh, inter we had internet boom many social networks uh, for the first time a smartphone was introduced uh, introduced and uh, we had some uh, new operating systems like iOS and Android uh, so uh, I think uh, I also in my experience I think the first time that I had uh, the real data service was here because in 2G in my own experience uh, in the place that I were living in 2G uh, even in e Edge and GPRS I couldn't uh, experience data but for the first time in 3G I uh, experienced data and it was really fantastic after a while so uh, here uh, many uh, people were interested in mobile uh, phones uh, it changed our lives a lot uh, with this huge amount of interest uh, so we expect to go uh, to have new generations better and more fantastic so we had 4G LTE long term evolution in 2010 uh, it uh, the theoretical data rate was expected to be around 100 megabit per second uh, it was all IP network based on IP and also many other new services the tremendous growth of social networks and so on continue in this and also right now this is the uh, best and stable uh, mobile networks I think widely used in all over the world uh, from I think from 2017 or 2050 I will go through that in the future slides uh, the <clears throat> a study on 5G uh, started right now 5G is commercially used in some countries uh, like USA, Japan and uh, Korea, South Korea um, in, in some brief we should say that we can uh, in 5G uh, the main focus is not on the core business of mobile like voice and SMS is not like that we can uh, categorize services very simple to three uh, to three main categories first uh, EMBB enhanced mobile broadband which is the internet through uh, in order of gigabit per second the next one is uh, URLLC which is uh, ultra low reliable low latency communication as the name uh, tells us uh, it is very reliable and the latency is very important like for example autonomous cars and uh, for example telesurgery and the uh, last one MMTC which is mobile um, no no massive machine type communication which used for massive uh, uh, communication for devices like IOT internet of things like M2M machine to machine and also uh, uh, how to say um, something like that uh, uh, V2X vehicle to everything I forgot the name uh, and right now the um, uh, research some research on 6G is uh, is uh, right now um, some people are research uh, are doing research on 6G in um, uh, good universities in the world uh, 6G has a uh, very interesting services I will go through them for example si some of them is like internet of the space you will have internet in the space for example the unconventional data communication uh, with AR and VR and uh, many great and new uh, applications which will uh, talk about that in the late in the future so it was a uh, it was a brief history of mobile networks but we will go through each of them uh, in the in the appropriate time so if I want to uh, uh, in all of my mobile network classes because uh, during the, these 10 years of uh, experience I also had 
uh, I also had honor of uh, teaching in many for many mobile operators and also university and uh, enterprise customers so uh, in all of the class uh, I started with global system for mobiles or GSM overview uh, because I think that in all classes we should uh, review the basic the basic uh, is GSM so uh, despite it is it changed a lot during the time but uh, it is better to have a review on that so let me introduce that you what is cellular network cellular network or mobile network is a communication network where the last link is wireless so uh, the, the definition of cellular network or mobile network is a network that the last link as you see here is wireless okay uh, the network is distributed over land areas called cells so we have some cells as you see here uh, uh, which serve by the list one fixed location transceiver known as cell or base station these are some base station as you see in the streets or somewhere you go so you right now you you can uh, have a sense of what a mobile network is what a cellular network or mobile network is uh, um, in a very simple word I want to uh, say you some uh, thing about the general structure and uh, summarize this uh, this the first video uh, and I will uh, generate more contents for you after this uh, in a very general uh, uh, categorization when I want to tell you that uh, what mobile network is consists of I should that mobile network generally consists of two part first uh, radio access network uh, but in the um, but we, sh we can also put R in the parentheses like in 5G because uh, um, uh, access network is not it could uh, could also be not radio so the first one radio access network the first part and second part is core network uh, it it should be uh, it can also be access network not radio okay uh, if we want to uh, put a line and uh, uh, draw a border here we can no no sorry uh, I put the wrong line here we can uh, let me let me choose a right per right pen okay here we can tell that here is radio access network which we see some for example BTS base station transceiver that I will uh, tell uh, you the function and all the features of that we have a uh, air interface here and BSC base station controller which will manage this BTS or other BTS that is connected to this to this controller and also uh, some tasks like frequency management and so on and here we have lots of node uh, that named core network and the reason that I'm focusing on core network you see that there is two reason because at first my expertise in core and the second that you may see many many several nodes are in core are located in core uh, and this is uh, just GSM 2G but uh, in 3G, 4G, 5G, IMS the nodes will be very uh, much more uh, about the about each uh, entity here uh, we should say some story and some uh, something for you uh, but for the for the last item of this uh, course this session I should say that uh, my uh, method in uh, teaching is like this we have many we have many nodes in mobile network we should uh, I expect you to know three items about that about them one the interface name for example you see that here it is a interface the interface 
uh, for those who are not familiar with mobile networks interface uh, is a logical name here when I when I say for example in IP network when I say interface many people think that interface is a physical network but in mobile network in telecommunication network when I when we say interface is a logical uh, name that we agree with each other to know the concepts better so uh, the first thing is an in interface the second one you should know I expect you know to know is the protocol that is used for talking between these two nodes and the third one and the last one uh, or uh, we can say the least but the last but not the least the protocol stack for all uh, all of the nodes during this course I will go through the details of mm, this information so uh, for this first session I think it's enough I will wait for your feedbacks I hope this uh, would be useful and informative for you. See you.